the next thing I'm going to check is uh, my camshaft uh, bearing inside diameter. So for that, I'm going to use a little bore gauge. I'm going to stick that in there and release it and lock it down. And you just got to be careful you don't stick it in too far because there's a groove on the top part here. You don't want to be measuring in that groove. So now that I have my measurement locked in on my bore gauge, take it down to my micrometer here and just set it in. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Tighten up the micrometer till it clicks. Take the measurement and reference that to the chart. Okay, for that one I want it to be between 1.063 and 1.0638 and it looks like I'm okay. So the next thing I'll measure is the bearing diameters on the cams shafts themselves and for those I want to be between 1.0614 and 1.0622 inches. I just check this guy and uh, it was 1.0614 so I was just on the low end but within the service limits so these should all be similar so those should be okay. The next thing I'm going to measure is uh, my 20 length, 20 link chain length uh, that just measures the stretch in these cam chains so I marked one uh, one of these um, knobs with a felt marker counted 21 knobs down and marked that one with a felt marker and the distance between those two marks is 20 links and it should be between 127 millimeters and 127.4 and the service limit for that is 128.9 so if it's over that you gotta replace the chain and so I'll just line up uh, my caliper with the center of that mark and the center of that mark and see where I'm at. Sitting at 127.17 for that one. Check the other ones the same way. They should all be good. The next thing I'm going to try is my hydraulic lash adjuster leak down test. And I am shooting for a deflection less than 0.079. So I have this set up. So when I push down on this lash adjuster, my uh, dial gauge is zeroed out. So when I push down on this guy, I want a deflection of less than 0 0.079. Sorry, I meant to say less than 0 0.0079. Okay, the next thing I'm going to try and measure is the cylinder head warp. And... Uh, the service limit is 0 0.05 millimeters, and that's the same as two thousandths of an inch. I have to apologize, I've been bouncing around between my units, but I'll link my spreadsheet that I made up in the video description. So for this one, I'm going to use my caliper as my straight edge, as I don't have a very good straight edge kicking around. And then I'll try and uh, slide a 0 0.04 millimeter thickness gauge in because I don't have a 0 0.05 and um, if that doesn't go I'll know it's within service limits. So let's give that a shot. And I'm going to want to do this all over the head in as many different spots as I can. Hmm, seem to have got through there. Oh, maybe not. I can't, uh, can't be sure how accurate this, this caliper is as a straight edge either.
I didn't get it to slide in anywhere all that easily, so I think it's uh, good. So for valve head thickness, uh, measuring the thickness between the bottom edge of the valve and the edge of the seating surface. So I'm just going to try and do that with this caliper. Now on the exhaust valves, uh, I'm shooting for a one millimeter lip with the service limit being half a millimeter. So I'm measuring pretty much exactly one millimeter. So this one, sorry about that, my battery just died, but uh, I found out that I can record with this thing plugged in, so that's cool. I don't have a small bore gauge, small enough to uh, measure the inside diameter of the valve guide. So I'm gonna use the wobble method. I'm gonna lube up my valve. I'm supposed to use a new valve to measure this accurately, but this is what I got. I got my front right exhaust valve and I'll put that into its guide and um, I'm going to use a dial gauge and I'm going to see how much I can wobble it in there and that'll tell me how much uh, that'll tell me if the valve guide is still good or not okay so I have my dial gauge lined up about as close to the cylinder head face as I can get it and then it's resting against the valve and I'm just gonna wobble the valve back and forth in the guide and it's pretty tight I think this guide's got a lot of life left in it <clears throat> but then I gotta measure it again 90 degrees to the way I wobbled it this way so do that but these should all be good gonna measure the wobble in the opposite direction that I did last time oh, gotta hold the head still it's good that way too and I should note that the exhaust wobble should be between 0 0.07 and 0 0.13 millimeters and the inlet valves should be between 0 0.02 and 0 0.08 millimeters so a little tighter on the inlet ones than the exhaust ones. The next thing I'm gonna try and do is measure my valve seating surface. Now you measure the outside diameter and then you measure the width and that will tell you whether you have the proper uh, size seating surface. So for the exhaust valves, or let's start with the inlet valves. The inlet valves are going to be between 30.9 and 31.1 millimeters and the exhaust ones will be between 26.9 and 27.1. So I know this is going to be a little tricky, but I'm going to try and uh, measure this with my caliper. So I'm on the inlet side. I just want the edges of this seating surface. So I'm pretty close to the, the high end, but it looks pretty good. Try the exhaust side. Gotta make sure that I'm measuring this across the center of the circle as well. It's a little tricky. It seems a little big. I'm measuring the wrong thing. One of the trickier measurements to take. Maybe I should do this again once I uh, grind the valve seats. Okay, so my valve seat width should be between um, 1 and 0.5 for both of these guys. 1.5 millimeters that is. That guy looks like it's on the high side. So does that guy. They both look like they're over one. So I don't know if these need to be ground or whether I can clean that up 
with uh, the lapping compound. I'll have to look into that. Okay, I think I was measuring the wrong ring here. This uh, skinnier one, which is definitely where it's seating, is closer to the 0.5 mark. So it looks like it's good for the inlet ones. Um, it's a little harder to tell on these exhaust ones. Um, I think I'm still good. I'll have a better idea once I kind of scuff it up with the compound.